So I was having an argument with a professor of ethics over the existence of God, and I was pressing her with, with some of the classic arguments for God's existence. And after a few rounds of going back and forth, she eventually threw her hands up and said, you know what? What does it even matter? What does it matter if God exists or doesn't exist? And I took a second, and then I said, well, hold on, professor. Are, are you seriously telling me you have never considered the implications of whether God exists or does not exist? Because to me, this is the most exquisite and important question that any philosopher could ask. So to not seriously consider this question, I think, would ruin the credentials of philosophy altogether. Uh, the implications of God existing or God not existing are not only important, but enormous. And we are going to consider those implications today in this video. I'm Pat Flynn, and welcome back to Philosophy for the People. So let's consider the scenario that God does not exist. Well, this would mean that there's no transcendent dimension to reality. Nature is all there is. And this would imply that there is really no ultimate value, purpose, or significance to human existence, let alone your individual life, but also the collective human experience as well. Because science tells us that Eventually, a very long time from now, very long, longer than any of us will live, the universe will run out of energy, matter will collapse, and life as we know it will be completely and eternally snuffed out. So no matter what we do, no matter how many good things we think we are doing, no matter how much money we give to charity, no matter how much we innovate in technology or science, we're all going to the same grave. There's, there's nothing we can do to create any sort of different outcome. So what are the implications of this? If there is no transcendent dimension of reality, if there is no objective purpose for why, why we are here. And that's really what I'm hinting at, right? Because if God does not exist, we have, we have no grounds for believing that humans are here for a reason. We're just slightly more evolved primates floating through space on an infinitesimally small speck of dust and we're all doomed to death individually and collectively. There seems to be no way that we could ground objective value, meaning, or significance if God does not exist. And many of the greatest atheistic philosophers were the first to really bring this to light. And this is why I very much would say that on an atheistic worldview, you cannot live both consistently and happily. There's no way that you can look atheism straight in the face and be consistent with the implications that we've just described and still live a happy life because nobody can live a happy life without a sense of meaning. Now you might say, as many of my atheistic friends do, that how, how dare you tell me that my life has no meaning? I, I have a great sense of meaning, that I'm doing good in the world, and I love my friends, and I love my family, so that's a really arrogant point of view that you tend to hold, you theist you. And I would say, be careful, because there's a very big difference between having a sense of meaning, which would be subjective, and there being actual or ultimate meaning, which would be objective. To say that something is objective means that it is valid and binding independent of any human opinion. Of course everybody has a sense of meaning. It's pretty much impossible to live without a sense of meaning, which is why I said that it's impossible to live both consistently and happily within an atheistic worldview, because you have to eradicate the notion that there is any meaning without God, and that all meaning that you do have would merely be illusions brought about by the socio-biological evolutionary process. So that isn't actual meaning. That's, that's really just a sense of meaning, and they're, they're two quite distinct things. So it seems to me that uh, if God does not exist, the implications are enormous and devastating, that, that everything we feel is important, that everything we think is significant, the sense of right and wrong, the sense that, that what we do actually matters, doesn't matter at all. There is no right or wrong. Without that transcendent dimension of reality, without being here for a purpose and a reason, we are left undeniably with 
nihilism. So let's look at the alternative. Say that God does exist. What would this mean? Well, I think it actually opens us up to a range of possibilities. One possibility is that humans were created for a purpose, that there is some type of reason for our existence, some type of ultimate meaning or significance. It also would open up the possibility for objective moral values, that humans have some type of inherent and intrinsic worth that transcends the socio-biological evolutionary process. So there's a lot of good possibilities, I think, on a theistic worldview, but I will be the first to admit that just because God exists doesn't mean that those possibilities are true. We could imagine that uh, God is a deadbeat dad, a sort of deist that set everything in motion and then moved on to more interesting or important things or other projects. He got bored, right, and stepped away and we're just kind of on our own. Certainly a possibility. But those are possibilities we can explore and evaluate with further arguments, all I'm trying to do right now is get clear on what the implications are of these two very diametrically opposed worldviews. Either A, God exists, or not A, God doesn't exist. So if God doesn't exist, there need be no disagreement between the theists and atheists. We can say very clearly there's just simply no way that we can ground objective meaning, value, purpose, or significance in life. But if God does exist, there's at least the possibility that we are here for a reason, and it might be a very good reason and something worth paying attention to. So nothing in this video is supposed to be an argument either for the existence of God or against the existence of God. We will consider those arguments in a future series. All I am trying to do is set the stakes and get you to see why this question is so important and why the implications either way are so enormous. So to say what difference does it make, is just to be deeply, deeply confused. This is the most important question. We are trying to establish a foundation for meaning, value, and significance in human life. And what could be more important than that? So here, I'll, I'll leave you with this as a sort of pseudo Pascal's wager. And, and a lot of people get Pascal's wager wrong because they think, again, that Pascal was trying to make an argument for the existence of God, which he wasn't. All Pascal was saying is that if you are undecided, if you're on the fence, this is a forced wager. Either you have belief or you have unbelief. You can't be in between because anything aside from belief is unbelief. So it seems like if you could go either way, if you've looked at the arguments on both sides, the rational person would go to the side that gives the objective foundation for everything we want to affirm. We want as humans to affirm that our lives have meaning. We want as humans to affirm that there are such things as truly right and truly wrong in the world. And we want to affirm as humans that there is some type of ultimate significance to our lives. So again, if you're an agnostic, if you consider the arguments, if you could go either way, um, I would take Pascal up on this wager. But if you haven't considered the arguments, stay tuned for future videos because we've got a lot of good things coming.